You know how sometimes you go to the thrift store and find something that's so ugly and horrifying that it has to come home with you? I'm Michelle. This is my romantic tangle. And I've spent the past two weeks trying to decide whether I did a good thing or a bad thing by buying these double net polyester quilts. I don't have a lot of space to lie out big quilts, let alone big quilts that are of questionable pedigree and cleanliness. So I didn't get my first good look at them until we went to the laundromat. To my surprise, quilt number one actually has a coordinated pattern of fabric placement. I mean, it's still ugly as sin, but there's a method to the madness here. I was going to drape it on the floor, but the floor was extremely scary and that didn't happen. I am not familiar with this block and all of the blocks are joined with hand stitching. The hand stitching is the same on both quilts, although I can't imagine that there was a chance that two quilts with the same pattern with the same style of ugly polyester turned up in the bins on the same day made by different makers. I am 100% convinced these are by the same quilter. This is the back side of quilt number one because these quilts, guys, are reversible. As far as I can tell, there is no batting in there. I'm not going to pick a seam to look, but I can feel the two layers of polyester rub against each other. I actually like this quilt now that it's spread out a whole lot more than I thought I did. This is quilt number two. I don't know what is going on with quilt number two because there is no rhyme, no reason. These colors, they don't go together. Not that the colors in quilt number one went together, but it's a quilt. And this one did have a very noticeable stain. It looked like dirt, and I crossed my fingers that I would be able to wash it out. Double knit polyester is pretty much unstainable. This one fabric is the only fabric in the two quilts that is not polyester. It is woven, and I don't know what it is. Probably a synthetic. At that point, I was hoping it would wash well with the rest of the fabrics, and I was questioning how well these would wash. I took a gamble. The fabric should have been fine, but there was the hand stitching to be considered. And I did smell the quilts in the Goodwill bins. They smelled of a little bit of mothballs and a lot of old lady scent, so I'm pretty sure these were in someone's house. The blocks wrap around from the front to the back. I don't know what this technique is. If you do know how these quilts were made or what the name of this block or technique is, please let me know in the comments because I'm curious. I have a feeling that there's some obvious name that I just don't know. This is the back side of quilt number two. And it is just as spectacularly ugly as the front side. When I was getting ready to record this video, I couldn't find quilt number two. And if you will, if you watch my channel, you'll understand why the thought of losing a quilt at the laundromat filled me with terror. I thought it might be in the car, but my husband drove the car to work. And then I went and checked just in case, and it's on one of my son's beds. I threw these in the laundromat with hot water, with a lot of laundry sanitizer and extra soap. I do not recommend washing old quilts this way. But these particular quilts needed a bath and they needed a heavy duty bath and it all worked out. Take a look at the one stain. It's there if you look hard enough for it but I'm happy with how it came out. Now that I've washed them and had some time to think about it, 
I really am glad I bought these quilts. I don't know if they would have haunted me because without having the space to spread them out, I would never have known really what they looked like. The reason why I feel like this was a good decision, we live in an old farmhouse. When the power goes out in the winter, it gets cold at night. I've shopped for blankets and the blankets they're selling in the stores these days, the fleece ones that are trendy right now, they just don't appeal to me in any way, shape, or form. They seem like they're going to wear out quickly and regular cotton quilts, even when you pile them on thick, do not have warmth the same way that these things do, especially since they're double-sided. These are going to be heavy. So I think $10 each was too much to pay for them. At the same time, I think it's less than I would have paid for brand new quilts. And these darling monstrosities will outlive brand new quilts, I'm sure. I'm guessing these were probably made in 1980 at the latest, probably earlier. Let me know where you think my guess falls, but I think these will live a long life in my house. I cannot believe I already lost one, but I found it, so it's okay, and it's not at the laundromat, so it's okay. I feel protective towards them, and I don't know why. Somebody left a comment in the YouTube short that I did about these saying that it's like the ugly old dog at the animal shelter you hope someone else will rescue. I feel like I rescue these. I feel like they need to stay together. I would love to know what the story behind them is. I'm guessing that they are scraps for making clothing, if only because who in their right mind would go and buy these fabrics to make a quilt out of them with the purpose of making a quilt out of them? I'd love to know where they came from. I would love to know their history. I can't imagine how much time all of that hand stitching would have taken. It seems like they would have been a labor of love. Maybe it was someone with time on her hands she needed to fill. I don't know. But now that they're washed and clean and I'm not scared of getting germs off of them, I'm getting attached to these quilts. Let me know. Would you have bought them? Would you have left them behind? I'm curious. I've got a weird fascination lately with double knit polyester quilts. And they serve a good purpose in my life, so it works for me. I'm Michelle. This is my romantic tangle. I'll be back with you with more videos soon.